Transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. Prepare to have your bones chilled and your hairs raised. It's the Whack Arnold's Brothers Podcast. Welcome home. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess we better <laughs> record then as well. The, the sounds of our voices means that you have tuned into another episode of the Whack Arnold's Brothers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, David, this is episode 25, my friend. 25. Yeah. We're, yeah. Five, man. Like, well, just, it feels like just the other day we were celebrating 20. So, like, like it's like wild. <laughs> how, 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 like, these episodes just like they sneak right up on you, don't they, hot dog? We, uh, I'm going to say it right now. We still, one of the main reasons we started this podcast is because we talked about, like, one of the main movies we talked about was. Uh, Pinocchio's Revenge, and yeah. I feel like I feel like we need to get to that at some point. We and we do. will. We yeah. do. I feel like that that needs that will be one of those mile marker episodes. I think, like you know, like, <laughs> where it's like, yes, we, now is the moment. Yeah. But yeah, it's out there, and that you know, I mean, you know, this episode, like we're you know, it's just another kind of general horror movie talk. But right, right. You know, that movie is one of the, it's like it's. Oh God, I think I've mentioned it to you before, but I I put that movie in the same category as like the Jack Frost, ter- like <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they're like they're just like like I've enjoyed them and laughed at them and thought they were just ridiculous for so long that they totally would forever forever be movies that I want to watch. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Speaking of ridiculous, real quick, I have the worst song stuck in my head last night, no- right now. So- <laughs> So a couple nights ago, like there's this little like a uh, hole in the wall diner that's connected to a gas station that uh, me and one of my coworkers will go to every now and then, and they're always playing this like uh, country radio station. It's always like the shitty country songs. But the other night we were there, and one of the songs came on. I should have been a cowboy. <laughs> I should have learned to rope and ride. <laughs> <laughs> I should have learned to rope and ride. It's oh been stuck God. in my head since. It's such a ridiculous song. Oh, that sounds fucking hard, dog. Yeah, dude. That 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 is how I say it. <laughs> like going through uh, like playlists of other people's music a lot lately. Uh, getting up, like these random songs stuck in my head that I just like I have no connection with, but like they're there. You know, <laughs> like oh god, like what? Like what? Well, like, um, there's this, like, there's this track off of, what was it? It was Dusty's playlist recently. It was like, uh, not, oh God, it's not Weedus. I actually like that song. I have to look it up real quick. It was, um, this fucking misery business song that oh, like, Paramore. Yeah. 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 And like, you know, it's like, it, it's, I was just like, it's just like in my head and they're going to, they would laugh at me so hard if they knew that I was saying this right now, because I was like, this is my least favorite song of the fucking track on the playlist. But, but like. I just, it's just there now. And I haven't been able to shake it like for like three days. <laughs> since I, I liked that song. I liked that song back in the day. You know, what's funny is that randomly MGK made like a cover version of that song and it's so awful and so unnecessary. It's like, why? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. Stuff like that when it happens too soon, you know what I mean? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like there's like, I imagine that like his version doesn't hold up to the original version and the original no, version isn't not. even that dated so it's like why fucking remix like redo it dude yeah i don't uh, know anyway uh yeah dude like i mean that, that actually that logic shockingly applies to movies too though man like right know, where, where it's sort of like every now and then well okay let, let's look at the, like uh the 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 next scream movie really quick like like i i'm looking forward to it but of i was course. confused is it do you know is it supposed to be kind of like a reboot is it like supposed to be kind of maybe like a, an ending to those characters of sorts is it i think i think what they're doing because because it, it has the legacy characters so i think it's like a movie where they're gonna have these legacy characters but they're gonna pass the torch to the, yeah. a new a new you know yep. up and coming young faces you know what i yeah. mean which they've been, you know, it's happening more, a little more often in, in horror. Like, I really wonder, you know, with Halloween Kills, for instance, if that's going to lead to, 
like Halloween ends being the end of Michael Myers or being the, we've talked about it, or being the end of, you know, just Laurie Strode's story. And Probably, the next thing you yeah. know, like Michael's again, active again, you know? Uh, and it's like, I feel like those are better ways to kind of continue these iconic characters, like 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 Ghostface and like uh you know like Michael Myers, um, without having to full on try to redo like like the the story because like every time you try to okay. redo a story, it's hard to make it like feel original again, no matter what. True. Right? And so you're just sort of like why you know I don't know it, it's it's just difficult. Like a character like 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 Ghostface though like that 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 could be pa- easily explained as being passed you know on to like somebody else and somebody else and somebody else because that's where the character mm-hmm. started right it was totally like, it, was, it was you know uh, just a couple of a couple of teens who were like really yeah. fucked up and like der- like felt and like billy and steve yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. you know? yeah. <laughs> which you know like, just scream alone we've talked about a bit of you know bits of pieces like it's it's got to be one of my favorite franchises Same. you know Same. I, I do just like i mean the iconic opening scene of the first movie like every time i watch it it like it, it still gets yeah yeah it still feels fucking like awesome you know like just like it, it's i don't know and and even I'll, even so far as like when you watch scary movie when they parody it like <laughs> it makes you want to watch screen of course like, like you of know what course. i mean you're just like i just want to watch that fucking like and they do such a good like good job parodying it also that was like. that was like one of those i remember like the shock waves it sent through the horror community where you had this huge star and drew barrymore and they killed her off so quick like that wasn't a thing that had really been done before so i remember like that was one of the big talking points it's like you come into this movie thinking she's going to be the main character yeah. and die. So, and then the other, you know, well, movies have copied that or whatever, but totally like even, even so far as like on the cover of, of the, and the movie posters, like she was prominently featured. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's such a good point, dude. I forgot that that was such a big deal. Yeah, that's like a that classic te- that movie. Tease, like, you know, uh, damn dude. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, what, like, what, you know, it, it, it's like one of those things. Like, eventually, Wes Craven was gonna have some, like, you know, something that really, really, like, was the next, like, like I don't know. He just when he knocked it out of the park with with Freddy Krueger's character in Nightmare on Elm Street, it mm-hmm. was like, I feel like you know he became this like standard for a, for a second, and then like with the '90s when he did when he dropped when he created Scream, it became like like again just sort of like totally standard and it, mm-hmm. it you know wow just like what a what an iconic like director even or you yeah know, to have all these a, yeah huge hits through these different decades for sure yeah for sure man like i don't know i, I just yeah i sometimes think about that. that that's just such a fucking cool fact like fact about wes craven how he, he's worked he worked through both of those two iconic uh horror decades if you totally know, if you ask me um yeah, I mean, there's like there's stuff from each though each decade that I really you know appreciate as as you know and and I'm sure you have like stuff that you can cherry pick from the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, you uh, you you know, what are some of the things that you would like say you look for in like an 80s horror movie? Well, like one of my, I don't know, it's hard to pick out like a, like I think at some point we talked about what we're gonna go through, and for like the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s do like a a deep dive into different you know make a list of our favorite movies from those decades so like off the top of my head it's hard to really like yeah think of something but one of my favorite one of my favorite movies from the 90s uh from 1985 is uh phenomena which yeah i've talked about before i'll talk about more in the future but not only is it one of my favorite Dario Argento movies, but it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And what, but what makes the phenomena like, uh, what, what hits home, like hits, hits it out of the park for you. Like every time. Well, it just has like the classic, like Jalo feels of like this masked killer who you don't really know is, mm-hmm. and has like some of those things they do, you know, it's running around killing teens, but there's just really cool music, uh, great cinematography cool characters and then another like italian thing that is just all the different 
batshit crazy things that happen in this movie. Oh yeah. Like even like more so near the end, but even the, at the beginning, there's this great scene where there's like this 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 tourist girl that misses her bus. She's in like the somewhere in like the Swiss mountainside, and she's walking around. She goes into this house, and all you see is you see you don't see the person at all, but it's this like character that's chained to the wall, breaks free from its chains, picks up this pair of giant like oversized shears and chases this girl and has this cool scene where she's by this like it's like a maybe like a a nature preserve by this waterfall and her head gets pushed back through the glass the glass falls all over her which in italian horror glass is always used in grotesque ways yeah and there's a great shot off camera where you hear her screaming and then you just see her head get thrown down this waterfall. It's an awesome opening shot. Oh man. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, but just the whole movie, Donald Pleasance is in it. He plays like this entomologist with the with a um a chimpanzee that's like his uh it's amazing. The and the last like twenty minutes of the movie are truly bonkers in the best way. Oh my god, dude. You need to, if you haven't seen it, you gotta see. I re- I, re- I, I like, recommend this movie to everybody. I feel like for some reason, I like I I I know I've like, I know I've like been in a room with this is playing, but I just don't yeah. remember like much Jennifer about Conley. It. Yeah, Jennifer Conley's in it. And she has like this like psychic link with insects. Oh, yeah, it's, that's right. That's it's just right. such a weird plot. I love it, dude. Well, and Argento always makes just such fucking immersive movies. Like wow. yeah, like like you were saying where it's like whether it's the cinematography the music the the, yeah the way the characters interact and like anything he just like there's like certain style that he brings to a a film you just you just he you know like like tenon bray is amazing inferno is amazing and has one of the coolest opening sequences of all time opera yeah Uh, opera yeah and, and and you know like uh you know, obviously, like Suspiria uh, uh, as well, but you know, and then the thing that's, I did he, I don't know if you, I, maybe you can, maybe you know, but did he, did the music come from Goblin in this movie? Because yeah, no, he, I know he he paired up with Goblin in a few. This one has more like it has like some Iron Maiden and some Black Sabbath. That's different, but yeah, which the is Goblin, also fucking cool. It's a, it's like, awesome. It's awesome. A but like you said, metal soundtrack. <laughs> it, it's badass. But yeah, because. Tenenbrae is a one word because he did a lot of work with Goblin, but Tenenbrae is one of my favorite um, soundtracks of all time. Yeah. But not only him, like there's other, some of the, you know, there's like a couple of these Italian horror directors that are, you know, like the who's who, like, like Fulci. We talked about him before. Yeah. House by the Cemetery is one of my favorite Italian horror movies. Don't Torture a Duckling is another one. And then there's also Mario Bava and his son Lamberto Bava, who've also both made a bunch of great movies, huh. like like Demons and Demons Two. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Familiar with the titles, I guess. I, yeah, yeah. Italian horror is just so special to me. I love it, dude. Well, and like, you know, we and we've talked about it before. Like it, it pushes, it pushes you as a viewer in in directions that that American horror just does. Totally. You know, totally. Um, and I'm not knocking, I you know, American not horror. at all. You, you get no. great things out of American horror as well, but it's just it's just different styles, you know. And and that's one of the things I I, I love is that is that you know it it gives you an opportunity to you know, uh, an opportunity to experience not just like a one dimensional aspect of horror, which is right. Sometimes, sometimes you feel like you do get like you know. In, it's a good point. Music. There's so much going on and different. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, dude, phenomenal. Such a good pick. Like, you know, what a, you know. Especially that, like I said, that end, that whole last like twenty minutes of the movie. It, oh man, it's 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 Argento at his finest, and I also feel like it's him at his most like uh, his most like creative and doing what he wanted to do. I think that that was like one of his biggest passion projects where he could just go full balls to the wall and do yeah. whatever he wanted to do and it for me it really works that's cool that's a that's a good way of, yeah like i i wonder how long uh it takes you to kind of get to that point where it's like all of a sudden people just want you as a director or like as a creator to just like 
throw your exact like what 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 your vision is is yes. exactly what people want to see you know what i mean totally like uh i somebody i can think of in, in like recent you know um is guillermo del toro okay. he's one of those he's one of those yeah. creators, those directors and yeah. that it's like it's just like you know that if given the opportunity they, these cats can like create uh, that immersive environment where there's there's characters and creatures good and point. things that you just like you just you will ignore reality and just dive right in and get sucked in. Oh yeah, what the fuck is happening and, and yeah, uh, yeah. Argento definitely ha- was a, is like and will forever go down as I think sort of a formative horror director. Like totally, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, what you know, kind of like thinking about eighties movies. Um, for myself, uh, I really, I really latched on to things like, I really latched on to John Carpenter as a director. To totally be, to be honest, like John yeah. Carpenter really fucking like. I mean, again, like somebody who must have been a student of like some Italian director or, so, uh, uh, or something, you know, along the way, like uh, with you know, or paid attention to the scene at some point because he like he feel I feel like he brings that same vibe where, you know. Uh, movies like The Fog, which I love. Oh man, yeah. Be- become this like, like it's a place in time, man. It is like a, a place you want, like like that the bay and the like the town that he mm-hmm. like you know and the setting that he creates is just it's immersive, dude. Like it is, and it's like I always like I'll daydream at my fucking day job about how I want to be, you know. Uh, the fucking radio host driving along the coastline, totally. my fucking lighthouse DJ booth, you know, and like that yeah. exact fucking place. That's and, a fantastic movie. And, you know, it introduces, uh, well, not introduces, but it brings Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, right. into right. yet another sort of setting uh, where, you know, you, you get to see her stretch her, her scream queen pipes, we'll say. It also uh, has Tom Atkins in it, who I fucking love. So classic, dude. classic <laughs> and classy. And yeah. we can't. And, and uh, uh, Barbeau, Adrian Barbeau. Right? Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Adrian Barbeau. Who's that cast. a fucking yeah. fox in the, you know. Yeah. Like she's, she, a, le- she, she's a legend. Legend, too. legend yeah. man. Like, I mean, uh, like, what was she, what, what was it though? It was, she was just recently uh, sort of, I just saw her in. Um, Anyway. She was in she was in like the the creep show series again because she was in the original creep show movie. But she's been in a lot of she's still in a lot of stuff lately. Yeah, dude, it's because people like because people like respect the living legend status, dude. They're like they're like they want her in a movie because she's a horror icon, like a sci fi icon. Like, same with Barbara Crampton, like she's still pumping oh, movies yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, the you know like the fog, like it, like I said, I mean it's it's a fairly straightforward kind of movie right like you you understand that something sinister is happening there's some there's this creepy fog that rolls into town and yeah leads, which is amazing and like some of the kills that you get are really fucking awesome some of the, like the sequences i i read that like some of uh, some of the, the shots of the, the fog when they like have to like really feature it uh-huh. were so hard to like pull off because they basically had to like they, I mean, they had to like use fa- like yeah. machines they could. I they heard that had, too. But they just had to do it so heavily that it was in like, you know, it just sounded like it was kind of like hard you had to get to, like, your timing right and, and get like these that. shots yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Which I, made me kind of appreciate those moments in the movie a little bit. There's just there's more, some you know? great cinematography in that movie too, and the killer fucking uh, like uh, decomposed pirates are great too. Like yeah, well, and they're, and like you know you don't. St- Full on see them for most of the movie. You see moments uh, with them, and then at the end, when you see all these like like you see all these ghosts kind of pop up in the church, and the, there's this big sequence where yes, you know, the priest is like is like, God, dude, so he's you know like he's basically like a, like he's gonna take on the atonement for like the the past sins or whatever, right, so, right, you know, in Antonio Bay and. Uh, it's just I don't know, dude. Like it's it's got these great mo- like image imagery moments. It's got these iconic performances, like you said, from like Nick Castle, like you know Tom Atkins as Nick Castle, who picks up you know the the stray hitchhiker Jamie Lee. Yeah, yeah and, and then, then they instantly the go fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, like I, like you know I, classic line like you weird Mister. You know like like right like you know, it just it it's fu- it just feels so fucking. But it's see, like weird because it feels cozy and like horrifying at the same time. This whole movie. This, this is also <laughs> one of those movies where we're talking about where it got like 
an unnecessary remake that was so brutally fucking awful yeah. that just makes you spin your head like why yeah and it, and it like to the point where it like det- i think it detrimentally reflects on this movie because totally it's like it's like people you say the fog and sometimes people don't even fucking realize that you're talking about the original like the john carpenter's movie they just think about that remake and you're just like Damn, unfortunately dude. like yeah. that's not the that's not the first thing that should pop into the in the people's minds it's, it's not this at all beautiful fucking movie exactly but, it is a beautiful movie yeah i mean i just yeah like this just this like like i said like good I call the, set, the yeah. setting of this movie is just so incredible but i but love it, that like movie. you know john like john carpenter pulls off like a kind of a, a sort of su- supernatural ghost story in a different way good point I think, yeah you know? it's and, true and again this was like you know this was coming off like i don't know how like i don't there probably wasn't anything between this movie and and or between halloween and this movie because halloween came out in what in 78 the fog came out in 1980 okay so I, and, you know, and it's and it's another collaboration between with with Carpenter and Deborah Hill. So it's another right. powerhouse collaboration, of course. Yeah. And so to me, it's that was like, a good pair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. To me, it's just sort of like, you know, like this was like the start of just a string of John Carpenter fucking bangers. But you have to also be a John, well, yeah. like a John Carpenter <laughs> fan to like really some of his he had work, a string like the thing. Dude, you know? I love uh, I love the thing. It's, yeah. It's uh, Escape from LA, Big Trouble. Like it, yeah. most of his filmography is fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, and you know, like, uh, uh, you know, just mentioning the thing. One of the, it's another it's sort of like it's sort of basic film pre- premise where you know it's like you think it's going to be you know it's a it's a movie about you know people discovering an alien life form or some shit. <laughs> but the tension that gets built in that movie. Mm-hmm. so fucking fast is like and sticks with it's me phenomenal. so fucking yeah. long is cr- like it 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 makes yeah it makes you question like, it does all throughout and that's one of the things that like i don't know like again like, i feel like carpenter was just bringing so, like just the like i don't know stuff to the table that that, that was like not necessarily like reimagining but just like adding more depth to some of these kind of like already established horror premises, you know? Right. And I, th- I just like, well, well the cre- the cre- the creature design in that movie, the special effects oh are, are God, all just, dude. just perfect. Yeah. Like that was another one where, so this was actually, there's a movie from the sixties called the, the, the thing. So this was like a yeah. technically a remake, Yeah. but this movie also got a remake that was awful with CG, oh, C- CGI fest. Like we've talked about it before. Nothing beats fucking practical effects. And this movie has some of the best you'll ever see in your entire oh, life. Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, oh God, dude, yeah, we could talk about the creatures on this all day. Like I, I love like the, the, the creepy shots of when the creatures just like start like morphing, you know, you think, you think you're going to like get like, you know maybe like a brief shot of like a you know this head starting to grow a leg and then it's going to cut to some reactions and then you'll see the full grown thing but no like in this movie in the thing you fucking watch as the whole creature morphs into this mm-hmm. like mutated gross thing right in front of your eyes and you see that in practical effect and you see it so it it just it, it i don't know one it, of the shots it, one of the shots that'll always stick with me and affected me when i was younger was the paddle the the scene with the pet where they're the chest paddles? Oh, oh dude. my god, dude! It's it so brutal shock and his chest and just when the jaws the, the just chest bites just his rip. hands off. Yeah, it's amazing, dude. That shot is so fucked up. Yeah, it's fucking great. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, John Carpenter and particularly like uh, particularly those two movies, The Fog and and The Thing, mm-hmm. just fucking well like eternally f- you- further established him as this horror icon yeah you know what i mean like if if he would have made halloween and not made another movie i still think that he would be like icon. legendary from that but he went on to make these uh, like just further establish his role yeah, yeah. I, I mean modern day horror wouldn't it will and horror uh just as a genre oh it's a lot as, as yeah. like like that as it's evolved like would not be the same without John Carpenter. I completely agree. You know what I mean? Because then you also get like such great works that are kind of like 
quasi comedic, but also be like also like you know commentary like the, they live you know fucking yeah incredible. oh god like, you know, yeah um, and again it builds on like these themes that you see with him of like paranoia that really pop, totally pop up in in, in in things you know even like movies like halloween where it's like you know you don't know where michael myers is gonna pop up you don't know how you stop him you don't you know it's true just, it's you know anyway yeah john carpenter will always be one of my favorite uh people to look to for of course some yeah. some entertainment um but you know like in this different way i also wanted to talk about uh American Werewolf in London because it's it's mm-hmm. you know we've talked about like how werewolf movies there's only a handful of really iconic ones right um and I mean this is obviously one that's usually at the top of the list of course uh, this is I, I mean American Werewolf in London is billed as a horror comedy um, <laughs> yeah and, okay rightfully and, so I mean yeah yeah I mean I, I'd say like I, I mean like it, it's definitely a dark comedy <laughs> totally you know totally you know uh but the, but but it's Direct, it was written direct by John Landis in 1981, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't think and I mean I don't think anybody was expecting to have like some of the uh, moments that you got out of this movie from somebody mm-hmm. like John Landis, who I think at the time was probably most known for being f- like funny and part of and circulating. Of course, around. yeah. You know, it he was... had he did the Kentucky Fried movie, he did National Lampoon's Animal House and the Blues Brothers. That's like, what I'm like, saying. Like it was such like, a a great departure to make this movie like Yeah. I don't think and, people were expecting it. Well in in this way where like, you know, I look at things like um you know Todd Phillips making the Joker and that how dark that got and how fucking interesting that movie was and the tone of that movie that came from a guy who has a background in comedy. You know okay. That kind of opportunity reminds me of John Landis making American Werewolf in London, where it's like he it's this comedy dude who's got to dive into like to horror and he brings this interesting sort of perspective where, you know, it's two friends. One of them gets fucking mauled to death. One of them gets survives this mysterious attack as they're like backpacking through Scotland, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like viciously mauled, yeah, viciously fucking mauled and, you know. Uh, you follow the movie basically like as you know this you know this character trying to understand like figure out what's kind of happening to him and you have these moments where he like the funniest moments are are where he interacts with his buddy who's slowly decomposing in front of his eyes those are ghost you know (laughs) those are easily easily some of my favorite shots of the film and also, like sure. as you watch that body get, like as this, you watch his body's friend get progressively gnarlier as the movie goes on, it becomes really gross. <laughs> and, like, you know? It's great, yeah. yeah. But the thing that brings like so much to this movie, I think, is the uh, is the practical effects of this movie. Like this has what's, and I consider a really fucking. Uh, strong werewolf transformation. Of course, one of the best. One of the best. I'd say, you know, we 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 accidentally watched The Howling, which turned out to be a, like a good horror movie this year. <laughs> this yeah. year. And uh, and that that you know again also has a really awesome transformation. But mm-hmm. this one tops for me. I get the same feeling every time I watch it. You know, okay. like same shock and awe of, of course of, of David all of a sudden fucking like of his hands extending and bones cracking and and like fur appearing and yeah his, oh my god the yeah when his face like protrudes yeah protrudes oh. and stuff, it's so fucking gnarly dude and it and really to know is that they did this by slowly piecing together this like the special effects and the practicality of it just just makes me it warms my cockles a little bit you know you're just like you're just like this is a fucking this is there's so much work and effort that was put into this to scare people you know it's just one of those moments and when you watch later on movies like like Wes Craven's Cursed where like the oh, werewolf God. transformations are so fucking CGI and so bad and you're like mm-hmm. this it just it mm-hmm. gives you nothing and yeah you know, it's true like this movie just like it I don't know man I I, I it will forever be like one of my it top, stands up there top yeah two top three werewolf movies you know so and, i'm blanking here and i hate when i do this but i forget the name of the actress that plays the nurse in the movie um, oh oh um god damn it 
Marcel Alex Price. It's uh, Jen, Jen, I'm looking at the cast list right now. It's Jenny uh, Aguter. Yeah, like A G U T T E R. She's she's been in other horror movies too, and she's great. I'm trying. To, I, I I'm spacing again because there's something that she's in that I, oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, before I like piss other myself horror that she's too been? much of. Yeah, before I piss my oh oh, she plays. Um, that's what it is. She's in Child's Play too. She plays uh, Andy's foster mother in Child's Play too. What really? Yeah, yeah. dude. Legacy character, yeah, yeah, 1990. That's why I'm oh, glad. Man. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like she didn't. It doesn't look like she did like a ton of horror. Ton of horror before, yeah. before uh, American Werewolf in London. Mm-hmm. Apparently, she was also in 1976's Logan Run. Uh, but yeah, ex- actually, a shockingly extensive, uh, you know, career uh, for her. But yeah, hmm. that, like that that. Dude, well, and this this moment, this movie, American World in London, has another one of those like really great jump scare moments. Uh, the one of the best ones that always sticks out with me, and it kind of has to do with like a hospital sequence where it's like it's like a dream sequence or something like that. I don't think the nurse is involved. Oh yeah, story, but, yeah. But it's like it's like the shot where David like is like having a dream or sees himself in a mirror in the dream or some shit, and like all of a sudden he has this like uber demonic face. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Where it's like white, and then he's just like, ah, like it, 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 like it always stands out. Like it gets me almost every time, but at the same time, I'll, I always remember like thinking it doesn't seem like a werewolf thing. <laughs> one of one of my favorite, and it's such a weird fucking sequence that they put in there is another like dream sequence he has, where him and his parents are at their house. And these like the werewolves and like the Nazi outfits bust into his house and just fucking shoot them all. Like it's so out there and <laughs> so wild. great. Yeah, dude, it's amazing. <laughs> and that I like, love that sequence. That kind of reminds me of like, you know, that's probably I mean, that's that's gotta be like some Landis influence where it's like, how can we get like absurd here? <laughs> like Yeah, you know? totally. Like, oh my god. Yeah, I, I, I just I fucking love that movie. Um That's why I like like another real quickly like how you mentioned landis had this background in comedy and made horror Mm -hmm. that you know obviously that makes you think of jordan peele who did all you know you know what i mean like there's just people like that or like how uh danny green uh or not danny green but um danny mcbride was one of the people that we owe to this to halloween the newer halloween and halloween kills he's one of the I had to look that up, by the way. Yeah. Like, I, I saw his, I saw his name, and I was like, "Is it that Danny McBride?" Yeah, and yeah, sure as shit, dude. Like, Danny McBride was one of the main writers for Halloween Kills. Yeah, which I like, honestly, like to me, what's cool about that is it, sh- it, it seems like people who are or have been fans of some of these things. You know, I imagine Danny McBride to some degree is a Halloween fan, is a Michael of, Myers yeah, fan. Yeah, of course. And there's the only reason that he was probably like, uh, like, you know, when this was circulating, probably got attached to it was because like, he probably really wanted to like, could throw his hat in the ring as to like somebody who could like, maybe I could contribute to the Michael Myers myth, you know, myth. You and know, he did. Legend. Yeah. And, and like, that's fucking cool. Cause like what, you know, like how epic would it be as a fan to be able to like write for that character you know what i mean of course of this course what i'm trying to get at that fucking feeling yeah that's a good point oh man yeah dude there's and there's there's just so there's just so much to to that came out of like the the particularly like you know the the that time frame of like you know the 80s 90s I, 70s was influential and then 80s and 90s exploded exploded but, for sure um, especially the 80s yeah there's like there's some wild stuff you know like uh you know, just in both in both areas, but I found this really random list of uh, just kind of talk, transition. I wanted to like you know throw some. I wanted to throw some '90s stuff out, out out as well, just like kind of because because we mentioned Scream and how that became this huge prominent thing mm-hmm. in like the mid '90s. But you know, before that, there was like you were start you, in that decade. You start seeing things like uh, it, which was like 1990, the Stephen King adaptation. Mm-hmm. Which you know, I think that was wasn't that originally um, just like a, a TV movie. It was right? on TV. It was two different, like uh, yeah, it was yeah. 
and and but but you get like i you start seeing iconic performances like right away in the decade because tim curry as tim Peggy curry Weiss, yeah the clown it's still iconic yeah still iconic i will say dude uh uh scars the, the the guy who played him recently like very menacing fantastic fan yeah. fucking fantastic uh but but just there's something that will always be haunting about like yeah the, the look as well as the portrayal of Tim Curry's. When I think of when I think of Pennywise, that's what I think about because I grew up such a massive fan of it. Like I remember, um, every now and then I'll I'll bring up you know my mom. But when I when uh, during the time around her passing away, I was reading it. It was the very first Stephen oh, King yeah. book I ever read, and it just like. It took me away to this place and I, I love that book and so yeah when i think about an iconic pennywise i definitely think about tim curry so that's a good point hell yeah yeah and you know and then like that like i said a movie from you know 1990 just kind of kicks off the 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 decade with like an iconic fucking villain you know, i feel like of course um, and then you know you have other things that kind of creep in along you know as as it goes you you have like classic i'd say like one of the classic vampire movies that kind of pops out through this decade uh is another uh, uh play on from literature it's an interview with a vampire which Ooh. isn't necessarily like i don't find it like it's not it's not like a horror movie in the it's not in like the, horror the, elements in, yeah in the ways that like we talk about a lot but it's 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 sinister and like i mean it's based on the Anne rice uh book i believe um mm-hmm. lestat yeah yeah but it is i don't know there's some really cringy uh, creepy elements to this movie that make that stick it's been a you. while since i've seen it you so know, i'm not really I mean, like super fresh on it but yeah. Yeah, yeah but but i mean you know it just it's it it gives you the like one of those sort of inside looks at at a creature that you've been seeing in, in horror forever right like mm-hmm. what what does a vampire do if it is immortal you know how does it live through time true that's kind of one of the, the interesting things you see there uh this movie so we also, talk, the, this what we're we gonna what were you we gonna say i was gonna say you also saw like you know different things come out of this you know the 90s like uh like there is like a right away in the 90s there's um a remake of night of the living dead mm-hmm. oh yeah that uh, it was i love that movie directed by tom savini that's why i love it dude it's because it's like his love letter to that movie yeah Dude, you know what great, i mean great that movie call. doesn't get enough credit like it gets shit on i like that movie yeah it's got a it's got tony todd you know yeah it's 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 like it's direct yeah being directed by tom tom savini you know like you just said david you know it's just gonna be a, a fan like just trying to like like chef's hey, homage, yeah. you know yeah of course chef's kiss yeah, the, mwah, this is gonna be a nice like robust marinara of a movie you know <laughs> So I know, and like we said, we'll talk more about not like '90s movies. But one of my another one that I really like. And speaking of Scream, it's kind of like a precursor to Scream in a way. But I love Wes Craven's new Nightmare because, as we know, he directed the first one. Yeah, and then so- from there, it kind of went out of control. But it has these super meta elements where it's like these it's the actors from the movie and freddy comes into the real world and and is it you know what i mean yeah so i recently i recently rewatched it and yeah it 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 actually is a pretty fucking cool movie it is i love like it. and he like, looks so great in that movie oh dude for real and and like you said dude, it's it's really cool because it uh, it's it's just it's meta as fuck. It plays directly off of itself, off of exactly. Itself. And it's cool to see the uh, what's that? Uh, Heather Heather, Heather Lang- Lang- yeah. Langenkamp is that? Yep. yep. Like she, like just seeing her uh, uh, like in this like oh my god, it must have been so strange. Like like not being the character that she is used to being. Right. Being scared by Freddy Krueger, but like her being herself, herself. supposed to be herself yeah. as being, I don't know. It's just it's so fantastic. Cool, dude. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, I actually really like, I don't know. Like I, for some reason I had this like completely different memory of this movie. Okay. And, and so like rewatching it and just being with kind of like having my expectations sort of like blown away. I was just like, Whoa. <laughs> it's also, it's also probably my favorite look of Freddy. Cause they make them look more menacing and creepy and dark. And I just love it. Yeah, they definitely make him like a, a, a lot more sinister in this one. And I, I love I love that uh, 
you know, you see moments of Robert England as right. Robert England, as Robert yeah. England playing Freddy and as Freddy Krueger in this movie. Yeah, it's great. It's just, it's, I, I like that. I enjoy that movie like thoroughly. Yeah. Well, because I think we, we had like talked about it briefly and I was like, man, I feel like I don't know what this fucking movie is now. And, and then like going back, yeah, like, like it, I'm glad that we had a conversation that kicked me into watching it this year. So. And he's another one of those people like, like Carpenter where he's had all these success through all these different decades. Cause like we mentioned before, he definitely reestablished himself with Scream. So it's just cool to see people like yeah. that, that go through maybe like these slow periods or these periods where they're kind of down on themselves and then make another fucking gem yeah. just to like just to reaffirm that's who they are you know what i mean definitely definitely you know um well, yeah because like wes craven like you know between between nightmare on elm street and scream uh being two like of his pinnacles yeah i'd say mm -hmm. uh you know, he's like, I feel like he kind of had a weird time identifying himself as a director because he did these like really shock movies, right? He did Last House on the Left, which is just like fucking gnarly. Uh, and he did uh, The Hills Have Eyes, which is also so, fucking I gnarly. I, <laughs> those might have been before. Um, were they Were they before Nightmare on Elm Street? I think they might be, but he but he did stuff like Shocker, which is like not a not as well known, but it's one of those movies about like a serial killer that um, yeah, nineteen seventy seven gets put in a uh, electric chair and comes back to life and has these like yeah. electrical powers. Like that's such a schlocky movie, but I enjoy it for what it is. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, again, like that's always one of the things that's like great about so much different horror is that like you know you can have movies like that and still get like a kick out of them you know I mean? totally totally uh yeah i mean this this i don't know this there's just so many like random again from that you could throw out like there's like a you know peter jackson's dead alive mm -hmm. which it was like i probably up until I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm talking my ass on this. It doesn't seem like he popped necessarily in in the U.S. Uh, like in you know for a really mm -hmm. long time, but he was just low key making these like, gory ass fucking yeah. like, gnarly movies in New Zealand. For of that. course, <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> you know, yeah, people absolutely love. Like he has one of those diehard fan bases because of those movies, and then he has his diehard fan base because of Lord of the Rings and some yeah. of the more non horror stuff he's made. So it's cool. Yeah. And then you also, I mean, you also have uh, things like um, around this time area, like, uh, well, actually kind of going almost closer to the millennium. Uh, fucking Blair Witch Project is something I want to talk about. Oh, man. Because, because that oh, movie man. fucking changed the game for a second, dude. Yeah, it, like, it, it wasn't the first like found footage movie, but holy shit, did it blow that genre into the fucking stratosphere. Yeah, it, it fucking nailed it, you know, with, with the found That's a fantastic thing fantastic creepy unsettling movie yeah I, I i don't think i don't think it was you know it's one of those things like they it, it was successful they tried to expand it and i don't think that was necessarily needed I no you could have left it where it was and and but like agreed the, the, the single blair witch project for having been in like the pop culture meta for uh as long as it has now it's still has good moments you know and still I mean? is talked about like i just remember that that movie like was one of those movies where it just creeped people out especially that um that last shot will stick for me forever of just the guy with his back turned to the wall it's so well done and just man yeah just what a great movie it's also one of those movies where it had like how we've talked about like uh um cannibal holocaust where people thought that maybe it was real this is one of those movies where the cast of the movie were told to like not speak to make it look like there was this real element to it like they really went out and did this you know what i mean that's so cool yeah. that they did that yeah yeah i i i love when uh things like like movies or like you know cast and crews try to get a little more like interactive with it like that where it's like totally you know, there's another layer of like mysteriousness to the whole project right mm -hmm. uh, you know which i don't very, think you could really pull off anymore like no it'd be so hard to do now you yeah know? um i i think like one of the, one of the like things i always liked uh do you remember the cloverfield movie yeah so 
I always like I always liked what they what they tried to start doing with that. But I loved that during the making of that movie and before the the when before they put it out, they like released like a website for the fictional company that was like oh, digging yeah. into the water and like unle you know may have accidentally unleashed these beasts and they like put these different like files up that you could access and like all these different things that like really made it interactive. So by the time mm -hmm. you got to the watching the movie, you felt like you know the found footage kind of shaky aspect of running through town and like all the shit that was happening was a little more real yeah you know i i think yeah i think you i think you wouldn't be able to pull it off these days just because people can like it'd be harder like yeah people can be like, that's like, fucking fake right away and or just cold. people people just find a way to leak stuff like like yeah. with spider-man like they tried to keep all these things a secret but literally like everything got exposed to now you know you know, they came out and said, yeah, these characters are going to be in this movie. You know what I mean? It's just, it's hard to keep mystique around movies these days. Yeah, 100%. And that's, that. you know, that's why I appreciate when I do still get the surprises. You know, it's rare, but it can happen a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What yeah. are, uh, what are, um, hmm, what was it? What was I going to say? I was going to ask a question and now I'm, now I'm blanking on it. But uh, what are what are some movies that like if you were to talk to someone and 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 uh, and recommend like some horror movies maybe to someone that just got into horror or really hasn't watched much horror like what are some movies you would recommend? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, it is. I, I would probably recommend like a fairly. I try to recommend a spread, right? I, I'd recommend things like. Oh man, like sci-fi. Like I'd want to recommend one sci-fi horror, maybe a movie, maybe maybe the thing if they hadn't seen it at that point, or like, or even like something a little more intense, like a fucking what's that movie? The Sam Neill movie, um, uh -oh. Event Horizon. Event movie. Horizon, yeah. Event Horizon, so fucking <laughs> gnarly sometimes. Like Jesus yeah, Christ, something like, something like that. Like if they, you know, if they hadn't, if they hadn't seen some of the some of the, you know, those mainstays, definitely you gotta check out. You know things like obviously american werewolf i'd recommend um finding one good stephen king adaptation maybe okay. uh, one of my favorites my favorites is misery hell yeah misery is 100 percent, dude that's that's easily w one of the best oh my kathy bates's performance is oh just my god and next level it's legendary you cannot like you cannot ever make that movie again because it will it will be it it's it's still just as claustrophobic and creepy and fucking like I, oh, sinister man. as it always will be yeah it, it, i love that movie and it's because of her performance man her performance is so fucking scary like it is oh god you know something like that i would definitely recommend okay um you know i i would i would say like i don't know like i mean and then you know like you want to do like Oh God! Not not to like throw out another I guess horror sci-fi, but like something like you know something from the nineties, like the like the faculty or oh yeah, uh, you know with a, the faculty. I <laughs> yeah, love that dude. You, dude, the faculty's fucking fun, man. It's a it's a cool it's a it's, it's a, a great cool movie. It's a great Robert Rodriguez movie that yeah. uh, was also like written by Kevin Williamson. Like the faculty is fantastic. Yeah, that's that's one that doesn't get enough love. Or well, appreciation. I feel like it came out in the same similar time frame as The Craft, which is which is a cool movie too. But, Fuck but yeah. I think like I think the those two movies kind of uh it's like one or the other. You know, you either remember the craft or you remember the faculty. Which we'll talk <laughs> we'll talk more about those when we do the nineties deep dive for sure. For sure but yeah. For sure. But yeah, like uh, you know, I mean definitely stuff like that. Like I I mean, one of the greats, obviously. You gotta you gotta make sure somebody's either either digesting, you know, Freddie jason of course or michael yeah you know? that's a that's a given like yeah but these are good, also these are good entryways into horror also you know? scanners scanners is another one I'd throw i'd throw out there because that movie the visual uh uh shit that you see in that movie sometimes like you know is it, intense the 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 performances from michael ironside the mm -hmm. performance from michael ironside's fucking awesome like he's yeah. just He's just it's true. It gives him a chance to be like a, like in the spotlight and sinister, you know, um, which I think he's usually like a kind of 
not like a side act character actor, but he's he's never like a like a main act. Like he's not, I don't know. I can't. I know what you're movies. saying. He's like, you know, I know what you're saying. Person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what about you though? Like, like I don't know. Like I, I always recommend people like the original Halloween. Like you definitely. said, some of the more icons are all. Sometimes I'll I'll tell them to sit, watch more newer things. Like your like your next. I always mm-hmm. recommend Hereditary to anybody. Totes. Um, things like Child's Play yeah. or uh, The Ring, which oh, I love man. that movie. Yeah, that's just a creepy, unsettling, atmospheric movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because I used to be the guy that like would write lists for people and be like, go watch all these movies and tell me what you like and don't like. And then maybe I can, you know. And guide it from there. You know? Yeah, totally. It's, it's the lost art of like, it's like the same sort of thing that you, you, you know, used to be like a, you'd go to the fucking rental store and like ask the person there for like some guidance, you know? Right. And right. they would have to like, they would, you'd have, they'd have to like sit there and like try and if they, if they were into the process, they would like, you know, have to sit there and try and break down like, well, what, what kind of genres do you like? <laughs> like out of that genre like like what well, do you like uh caddyshack or do you like the blues brothers you know right <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like yeah you know and slowly pick away and that's kind of it it's like you write you write a list with like a hand like five six horror movies on there and you come back to me and you say like you liked these three i can probably guide you into some other ones exactly <laughs> i just i love i love getting people into horror that maybe didn't really watch it or were apprehensive about it or didn't like it then they come back and they're like oh man that was great like i want more totally like, that's such a i love that feeling totally man i, I do too it's uh and you know that, that's i mean that's one of the reasons why this podcast i think is kind of a fun thing it's like it's you know we're, we're talking about uh movies that we get a kick out of uh you know and we take these breaks and we get to talk about you know movies that we love and like and you know aspects of this genre that we love and it's kind of I don't know. I hope I hope people that listen help find things that they want to check out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah. that. Aside from getting the big kick uh, as I do about like having you know having these conversations and watching these movies every week, like that'd be that'd be a true gem. Is like if somebody discovers something from listening to this, you know? Totally. But yeah, I think it'd be cool like to build off this episode to do what we talked about, like dives into sent into different decades. Um, but it'd also be cool to maybe do like specific episodes on different directors. Um, you know what I mean? Just like every now and then do that. You know, that'd be cool. That's it. Those are, yeah. you know, we'll to, I think we'll people, keep... people, people would be interested in that. I think so. I agree. We'll keep shaking it up that way. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, I think maybe, maybe we'll leave that one here for today. Totally. Uh, Cause, Cause yeah, I think, you know, it's it, we we definitely mentioned a handful of things that you guys should watch you know, on this episode if you guys haven't watched them all of course so, so you know i think yeah we'll 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 keep coming back we'll have a movie for the next episode and then we'll go from there but yeah um hot dogs thank you so much for listening thanks for paying yeah, attention yeah always you know this uh it's 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 a big genre full of so much that you can take away and yeah and ha- and, and halloween is the we're, we're recording this on uh, Monday the 25th. Halloween is this Sunday. Watch some fucking horror movies. <laughs> Damn straight. All right. Yeah. All Good right, night. man. Bye, hot dogs. <laughs>